Let's start off with the Nairobi Securities Exchange. We hit, we touched a new high again yesterday. What are you seeing in the market? There, there is a lot of appetite uh, in equities. Uh, local institutions are looking at uh, equities. Uh, foreign, foreign investors are also increasingly active. So I, I think that's really moving, moving the market. Then we, um, I guess we must talk about Safaricom, which was one of the big stars yesterday. 17-month high for that stock. I'm sure that a lot of investors are looking at this and saying, yes, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yes, uh, yes, certainly. And I, I think the, the, the circumstances have changed for the telco. Uh, it, has, it, it appears to be doing pretty well in the market. And um, so I think that that's really encouraging investors to get into the stock. Also, you mentioned the dividend books closure tomorrow. So we'll see to what level it, it, it adjusts after that. Is Safaricom undervalued? Uh, we, we, we think the, there's a lot of value that someone can get out of Safaricom. Um, we, we think the 2012, 2013 period uh, numbers are going to be pretty strong. Um, you know, the issue of the mobile termination rate, you know, has not been determined. And, and so tariffs uh, in the market have remained uh, generally good. So we, we think looking at that momentum combined with the other businesses, particularly M-Pesa, are going to be supportive of earnings going forward. All right, Safaricom is one of those, there's, there's too much to say about it, whether it's in, the, in investments in the fiber optic cable it did the other day, or the, the amount of voice traffic or m -Pesa. there's just so much to talk about it, but sometimes it almost feels the market has been a bit unfair to it. Um, I, I think to a certain extent, I mean, the market does find a, a certain pricing for, for the challenges. So the market never lies. And it, it does correct itself, but yes. I think also circumstances, the market is adjusting with the circumstances of Safaricom. We are seeing less competition on the part of Safaricom, uh, you, know, you know, and better, better positioning of Safaricom in the market. All right. Let's move on to Standard Chartered, which um, has priced its rights issued at 31.6% discount. Tell us about this new latest rights issue. Uh, they're, they're looking to raise uh, 3.2 billion shillings, yes. uh, and so essentially they, they had already announced it, and essentially now they've given the timetable of when the offer is going to kick and then and close, and that's in October uh, 9th to 26th. All right. Is it likely to be as, as let's say, the Diamond Trust Bank rights issue 82% oversubscribed? A lot of these people, CFC Standbake, Standard Chatter, looking at this one like, wow, if we can pull that off, then it would be very well. I think you know most of the rights issues that are coming through will probably be oversubscribed. Uh, there, there is commitment from Standard Chartered PLC, uh, you know, and that's a 70% shareholding. So already the, the only uh, shareholding under contention on the offer really is about 26%. Uh, and so we think the offer is actually going to be oversubscribed. All right. About another rights issue or the opening today is CFC Stanbeck. What does this look like from where you sit? Um, you know, we, we think it's also, it's also a good name. Uh, also, the, the Standard Bank of South Africa has, has committed on that offer. Uh, and, and we also don't see any problem with, with the company raising uh, funding. So we, we, we think generally, you know, the time is right for companies to actually raise capital, give, given the, the, the level of liquidity. Why is this new fascination with the rights issues as opposed to any other forms of raising capital? Well, banks, they've been expanding significantly over the last few years. And then uh, there, is, uh, there, there, there are new regulations likely in coming months, in coming years, uh, we, which are likely to require banks to sort of beef up uh, capital. And so I, I think the combination of growth uh, as well as regulatory requirements is sort of pushing banks to sort of raise additional capital to, to sort of make sure they are, they are well positioned. All right. I want to talk about this, but only because there's just so much to talk about. Ken Okobil is one that keeps coming up for different reasons. Ken Okobil investors' fortunes dwindle over loss is his headline in the, in the Business Daily today. It just reported that huge loss the, on late Friday evening, 3.9 billion shillings. And now investors are not too keen on it. At the same time, there's this Puma energy takeover, which appears to have almost stalled because employees are not on their side. What would you do if you're in, in, in management at Ken Okobil? Uh, as, as management, I think they're probably doing the very best to, yes. sort of, to sort of try and pull everyone on their side. Um, I think the transaction is uh, very positive, not only to the employees, but also shareholders. Uh, for the employees, because if you look at last year, they, they actually issued an additional 140 million shares uh, under the employee share ownership plan. Uh, 
I, I think if 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 the offer is tra the transaction is successful, these these shares might might vest almost immediately. You know, and you know, given the premium expected on the price, then it, it should be you know a, a, a good transaction even for the employees. Um, yeah. Let's talk about, finish off with your views on the shilling, which has been fairly um, strong at, at around 84.20, 84.40 for the past few days. Yes, there, there's been a, quite a bit of mop-up of liquidity by the central bank, so that, that has uh, supported the currency somewhat. Uh, but also we've seen uh, FDI into the stock market and generally into the economy. It, it appears pretty healthy. Um, we, 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 we've not seen any significant outflows, and so that, that really points to, to, to the strength of the shilling.